Hello and welcome back to a new video about how we have to document electrical cabinets, electrical installations. Well, I know we are mechanical engineers. Yeah? However, we build automated systems. And there's the other side, the electrical engineers, they also build automated systems. So the automated systems are somehow a very nice interface yeah? where both are somehow responsible. Yeah? And this is why we should really know what is necessary. We should a little bit look into those topics yeah? to understand what is going on or what is needed and why it is needed. Yeah? I have here a picture for you. I have here a picture for you of a small control cabinet. Yeah? This is a governor of a hydraulic turbine. Water turbine. Okay. What you see in there, the two top silver parts, yeah, they are the power supplies. Yeah. They are changing. They are changing from 230 volt to 24 volt. Okay. And below there you have a, a modular PLC. You see where this, there is still a cable connected. Uh, this cable is a programming cable. This is connected to, pro to the programming device. Yeah? We talked about this actually during controls, yeah? how to program this. And below then you see other parts, you see relays, you see the two big parts with the, with the, the potentiometers and the seven segment displays. These are uh, position regulators, position control for hydraulic positioning. Then you see coupling relays, you see terminals. So there's a lot of stuff inside. Top right, you even see a hygostat, thermostat. So there is also a cabinet heating inside that we can manage somehow the temperature and moisture inside there. Circuit breakers. Yeah, you know, there is a lot of stuff inside. So with our documentation, we have somehow to tell what shall be inside and how it shall be inside. Yeah? Then there are some plans how to do this. Okay? One, a very important plan, is the so-called circuit diagram. Okay? So there's the circuit diagram. This circuit diagram shows how all those parts are connected yeah? from a logical point of view. Yeah? Usually there is, it looks like this, that there is a power supply, somewhere 24 volts, yeah? and then there is the logic inside, there is maybe one switch, yeah? maybe another switch, yeah? then there is a relay, yeah? with some contacts. Yeah, these contacts can be found somewhere else. Yeah. Then below here we have the ground level. Yeah. And then there is the PLC maybe drawn. There is also a power supply here to the PLC. And this is the K101 or K100 maybe for the, for the CPU and then there is a K, K101, this is a digital input card, or oh, whatever, yeah, we have numbers, yeah, and then somewhere there is a relay, yeah, and this is just going to a terminal, this is the terminal X01, connection 1, zack, zack, connections, and connector 2, and so on, yeah, this is how a circuit diagram looks like. Actually, we talked about this during electrical controls. Okay, talked about this during electrical controls. Uh, circuit diagram showing how all those parts which are inside there are connected to each other. Huh? That's not enough. Huh? That's not enough to build this cabinet. We also need something like an assembly diagram. Okay. 
And this assembly diagram shows now how those parts are physically located. Okay, so there is then a drawing of the cabinet. And say here is one power supply, here is the other power supply, here is the K, this is also the, the numbers K100, this is the K101 and so on. So this is the PLC, I will place it here. Then here we have terminal strips here, this is the X01, connection 1, 2, 3 and so on. There are terminals and so on. And once I know where I put those things, yeah, where I connect those things, I can plan also the cable channels. Yeah. This gray parts here, these are cable channels. There, all the cables are running inside. It's a huge mess in there. If you open the first challenge, if there is a wiring error, first challenge is to get this open, get open the cover. This is not that easy. There are a lot of grippy things. Uh, ooh, sorry. Yeah, and then once you manage to open, you see just a bunch of cables there somewhere and you have to tuck one and see where it's going. Yeah, and this needs to be planned. Yeah, imagine this. Yeah, so you really need to know here is the cable channel, here are cable channels and so on. And here I have to place a cable channel and here and here. And I have to know how many cables are inside that I can select the size of the cable channel. Once this is clear, where to put it or how to put it, I can see if everything is fitting inside the planned cabinet. Yeah? If not, I have selected a bigger cabinet and start over. Yeah? So now we know where to put those things and how to connect those things. Yeah? There is really a lot of engineering inside or a lot of know-how. Yeah? Because if you're going always up and down and up and down with a cable, you need a lot of cables. Yeah? And if this is ordered, in a correct or in a more intelligent way, you can save cables. You can save copper. Okay, assembly diagram. Circuit diagram shows the function. Assembly diagram shows the physical appearance. With those two things together, I can build the cabinet. Then the cabinet is delivered on site and is only part of a bigger automation system. So there are several cabinets there and they all need to be connected somehow. Yeah? At least there must be a power supply somewhere connected. And the person who's connecting this does not really care about the internal function. You know, he connects, he or she connects hundreds of cabinets. Yeah? It cannot cope with the internal function of each of this. Yeah? So, there is also something called a terminal diagram. A terminal diagram is just showing the terminals yeah, to, and just the terminals to the outside world. Okay? And there is terminal yeah, X01, connection 1 connection 2, connection 3, and so on and so on, how big this terminal is. And here is written which cable number shall be connected there. Yeah? And here we can even see if the internal things are connected or not. And maybe we can even see if they are, inter if they are connected to each other also. Yeah? So this is a terminal diagram only showing the terminals. With the terminal diagram, the personnel on site is going. He knows this is the cable with this number and looking, ah, needs to be connected here. Wire one here, wire two or three and so on. And next cable, next cable, next cable, next cable. You see the connections of the cable here also in, in this picture. On the bottom of this picture, you see they're coming in a bunch of cables. Huh? and they're all labeled and so on. And these are just going to the correct terminals and then to the inside logic of the circuit diagram. Also Stromlaufplan, in German it's Stromlaufplan, Aufbauplan und, und Klemmenplan. Circuit diagram, assembly diagram, terminal diagram. 
circuit diagram showing the internal logic, assembly diagram showing the physical appearance and where to put this, and terminal diagram showing how to connect it on site externally. Yeah? Okay, now somebody needs to buy all those stuff, yeah? maybe for initial construction or for buying spare parts. Yeah? Then there is also the parts list. This should not be too weird for you that there is a parts list. You have parts list on almost every drawing. Yeah? You need to have a list which items are inside there, inside this cabinet, and also not to forget the cabinet itself, because this is also a part, yeah? of course. The parts list showing all the parts which are built in there. The assembly diagram shows where to build them in. Circuit diagram shows where to connect them internally. And terminal diagram shows how to connect the whole cabinet to the outside world, inside the ecosystem which is built up there. Okay. So these are the parts which I need to have for my electrical installation. Yeah. And this, now you also know what is inside there and how this looks like. Of course, it's looking more sophisticated than my drawings here. Yeah. However, with this, I think you, it's a good starting point. Yeah. And this needs to be there. What else needs to be there? We're going to talk about next time, because next time we're going to talk about laws. Yeah. We call it rules and regulation inside the European Union. Yeah. This is also an important matter for safety. We'll see. Eh? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.